Direct from the world's greatest Miracle Revival Big Top Tent, we present Miracles Today, the A.A. A. Allen Revival's telecast. This telecast comes to you as a mere portion of another great Miracle Revival service where God's power is in action. Under this great canvas tonight, there are people from around the world that have come to this great crusade to see God's power and to get their portion. This telecast features God's man of faith and power, Evangelist A. A. Allen. With one of the most dynamic young men of God in this country today, Reverend Don Stewart. With Sylvester Haynes at the Steinway Piano. With Richard Page at the Hammond Organ. With one of the world's greatest gospel singers who sings more people happy than any other singer in the world today, Reverend Eugene Martin. Featuring the Miracle Valley Choir. of Bible history, God has always had a man. When the children of Israel were in bondage to Pharaoh, God had such a man in Moses to deliver his children and bring them into the promised land. It's my very happy privilege to present to you tonight a man that even newspapers have said is a modern day Moses. God's man of faith and power, Evangelist A. A. Allen. May I introduce something brand new, offered for the first time tonight, for the first time on any radio broadcast or telecast. God's got a blessing for you. Isn't that beautiful? Made in this great summer tent camp meeting here in Miracle Valley. Brand new every song. 
and the most of the songs on this great recording written by Brother Gene Martin in this camp meeting straight from heaven. Go on and give the Lord a good hand. Pressed on pure vinyl, unbreakable, the finest quality. It hit one of the chairs. Bring it back to me. I'll show you that it's in unbreakable. God's got a blessing for you. And on this great album, this great camp meeting choir, Sylvester Haynes at the piano, Richard Page at the Hammond organ, and I'm going to ask them to sing for you, God's got a blessing for you. And remember, during this telecast, God has more than a blessing for you. He has a double blessing. Enjoy this great number. Listen, this is yours this week if you write me a letter. Just address your letter to Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Remember, this is a great faith work, and we depend entirely on people just like you to support it with your love gifts. So write me today and let me know that you appreciate it didn't break. After throwing it that far and bouncing off of a chair, pay almost an hour the greatest music and singing in the world. It's yours for your letter of appreciation. The Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona, just asks, God's got a blessing for you. Brother Martin. <laughs> this week for your letter of appreciation. God's got a blessing for you. I'd like to tell you about some more great recordings that made in this great campaign. Sounds of revival. How many believe in revival? Yeah. 
If you don't have yours, write for it. Give me a little sound of revival. <laughs> with me. Yeah. Now, thousands of our friends know, fine to see, friends, that you're not having much of a revival or sounds of revival in your church. But if you write me for this great recording, you can certainly have it in your home. Because where some of you go to church, you don't hear any sound of revival. Revival days are gone for many of you friends. But if you write me, you can have it in your home. But if there's ever a time we need revival in the church, it is now. Can you shout amen? amen? Did you know that this year, one million alcoholics will die and go to hell because there's no revival in the church? Did you know that one of, and if not the largest, denomination in the world recently at a great convention in California, and this came out of newspapers, declared that the greatest problem they have in their great denomination, more people are members of that denomination than any other denomination in the world, I believe. Their one problem in the church is what? Alcoholics in the church. Sanitarium hopes to expand to help more of the 4,000 alcoholic Roman Catholic priests in the United States. Now you say, you shouldn't talk like that on the top. Well, what are they putting this in the newspapers for? Everybody's reading it. I clipped this out of the newspaper. It came out of the Toronto Globe and Mail Saturday, July the 30th, 1966. The largest denomination in the world declares their number one problem in the church is alcoholics. Untold thousands, church members that belong to their denomination are bound by alcoholism. My God, when there's this many priests that are being treated because they're alcoholics, and they make it public. Don't you think it's all right if I say something about the need today in the church? Yeah. CF. Yeah. <laughs> 17 million Americans this year will die of heart trouble, which can be attributed to alcohol or cigarettes. Say yes. To say nothing about the millions that will be sick, diseased, and infected, and many of them will die because of liver trouble, kidney trouble, and every kind of sickness, disease, and infirmity, much of it attributed directly to cigarettes 
and alcohol. Yes? Did you know that there are 67 million problem drinkers in America today? A million die annually. 40 million social drinkers. Don't you tell me they're not headed for trouble. Every day there are 1,200 people join the list of alcoholics. 1,200 every day join the list. And a million this year will die. 40,000 Americans this year will die of cancer due to cigarettes. To say nothing about 5,000 will die of cancer of the mouth. Why? Because many of them switch from cigarettes to pipes. America is headed for trouble. Yes? Did you know? that 50% of every person that's in beds, in hospital beds in America, there's nothing wrong with their bodies. There's something wrong with their mind. Every other bed in America is occupied by someone who's mentally sick. There has never been a time when so many people are, so, are, are mentally sick. There's never been a time when medical science and psychiatrists have been so perplexed over the multitudes of people that are losing their minds, that are going insane overnight. But I'd like to tell you, will you listen carefully to me? Much of America's troubles are self-invited. Many of your troubles are self-invited. And many of our friends who watch this telecast, you have asked for your own troubles by either doing something you know you shouldn't do or by failing to do something that God has called you to do and you have failed to do it because all disobedience is sin. And while I mention it, the greatest book I've ever written, conclusive Bible scriptural evidence that nine out of every 10 people approximately ask for their own sickness, their own disease, ask for most of their troubles, and even ask for their death and doom and destruction. It's yours this week if you'll ask for it. Miriam asked for her own troubles, and God let her have plenty of them. God struck her with an incurable disease, leprosy. Why? Because she complained and criticized and murmured because her brother married an Ethiopian woman. Shout something. I said she criticized Moses because he buried a black woman and God was displeased with her because she didn't believe in integration. She joined the segregationists and God said, all right, and God struck her with leprosy. Why? Because he was displeased with the fact that she didn't believe in integration. Do you notice our choir is integrated? Stand up and let the people catch you. Stand up, folks, and let, let the camera see that we're integrated. There are people here, Indians from all over Arizona in this great summer camp meeting. Find a seat. There's people here from uh, many parts of Mexico. They're brown. My Lord, there's black people from all over the nation here, and there's white people from all over the nation, and there's yellow people here. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, yes. In the antiluvian age, millions, seven million people ask for a flood. They ask to be destroyed. They ask to go down into a liquid grave without one hope in the world. And God said, don't, don't worry, you're going to. You say, did they ask for it? Yes, they asked for it. By your deeds and by your actions, many times you ask for your own self-destruction. Sodom and Gomorrah, they asked to be burned off of the face of the earth. Say yes. yes. Their sins, their rebellion, uh, absolutely challenged God to destroy them. And God sent fire and brimstone from heaven and burned two cities off of the face of the earth because they insisted in living in their sins. Say yes. yes. Nebuchadnezzar, a king, a rich man, a ruler, 
ask for God to let insane demons drive him mad. And overnight, he was a wild, raving maniac with his toes, with his clothes torn from his body, being like a wild jackass and eating the grass with the oxen of the field. Belshazzar asked for his death, his doom and his destruction when he rolled that keg of wine out of his daddy's wine cellar and filled the vessels of the Lord with wine and set a toast to the God of this world. And the next morning, he was a cool corpse laying on a cool marble slab. Jezebel asked for the dogs to eat her up. And when the dogs got through with old Jesse, there wasn't anything left of her. Put her head in the palms of her hands, say yes. yes. And her old backslid husband Ahab dared God to kill him. God said, I don't have to kill you. I'll let somebody else kill you. Shout yes. yes. Ahab and Jezebel both asked for their doom and their death and their destruction. A backslid preacher named Balaam in Numbers 20 asked to die on the wrong side of the river on the enemy battlefield. And when the battle was over, there he is with his eyes open. But he died with both eyes open. Balaam, a backslid prophet of God, asked for his death and his doom, and he got it. David never had much trouble until he kept looking at that woman bathing on top of the roof. He asked for all his troubles when he took the woman off of the roof. And he said, uh, on this telecast, I can't tell you what he said, but you can find out what he said by reading this. <laughs> David asked for all his troubles when he went to bed with Bathsheba. Thousands of you people who view this telecast, and possibly many of you under this tent, have asked for your own sickness, as Miriam or as Michael. And many of you have asked for your own doom and your death and your destruction, possibly, as Jezebel or Ahab or Belshazzar. America's number one sickness is mental sickness. And listen, like Nebuchadnezzar, many of you have asked for that insanity or that oppression or sleeplessness or restlessness because you have failed to line up with God. You have failed to do what God commanded you to do or you're doing something that you know you have no business doing according to the scripture. Jonah would never have had his troubles if he had never have said no to God, but he said, God, I'll not go to Nineveh. And that's when he had all his troubles. Samson had all his trouble because he went to sleep in the lap of a little brunette woman. Uh -huh. And when the old boy woke up, <laughs> when he woke up, his troubles had just begun. Some of you people that watch this telecast have got no business doing some of the things you've been doing. You know the voice of God and you know the word of God. And if you don't line up with God, you're going to have more troubles than you ever had before. <laughs> Judas asked for his troubles and he got them and it became a suicide. He committed suicide. Yes, he Esau asked for his troubles and when it was too late to get rid of his troubles, he said to his father, Oh, my father, bless me, even me also, my father. But he listened to his father in Hebrews 12. And the father said, Son, there's no blessing for you. You've asked for your troubles. And the Bible says he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. But he said, Father, bless me, even me also. Oh, my father, he said, surely you've reserved a blessing for me. The father said, Son, there's no blessing for you. In other words, you asked for it. It won't do you any good to cry now. No need to repent now. You have crossed the deadline and you've gone too far to get rid of your troubles now. But you haven't, possibly. And if, if you haven't, 
do what I tell you tonight. Everybody stand with me quickly. Every one of you that bought my telecast, write for this book this week, read it. Get rid of your troubles in your own home. But I'm going to pray for many under this tent tonight, and while I pray for them, I'm going to pray for you that are having physical troubles, sickness. You're having financial troubles. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. God said, there's a soul evil which I have seen under the sun, namely money that people keep for themselves to their own hurt. Many of you people are hurting yourselves because you never give God the tithe or send him an offering. You have asked God to send the curse upon you financially. Many of you are in trouble spiritually. You can't get through to God. But tonight, I'm going to pray one prayer for everybody to run down these aisles, stand in front of me, that are having trouble. If you're having trouble of any kind, see how quick you can get down these aisles and stand right here in front of me. Physical troubles, financial troubles, spiritual troubles, mental troubles. Come running down these aisles. If you're having trouble with sin, Trouble with the devil. Come down these aisles. Stand in front of me. I am going to ask God tonight to deliver you out of your troubles. David said, pay thy vows to the Most High God. Then call on me in the time of trouble. I'll deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Come right on down these aisles. Praying for every one of you tonight. Get up both hands. Raise both hands. You and your home. Are you having trouble with alcohol, narcotics, dope, cigarettes? You having trouble in your body? Are you oppressed? Do you have a feeling you're losing your mind? Are you having financial troubles? Are you having trouble in your home? Put your hand on my Bible. Right out there on the screen. Just lay your hand on my Bible. I'm going to ask that while you lay your hand on God's Word, God will deliver you out of your troubles if you repent and turn from your sins and your wicked way. And you in front of me, get ready. This is your night. Oh, God! In the name of Jesus, deliver a multitude of our friends out of their troubles and from their troubles. In the name of Jesus, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every mother, every daddy, sick, diseased, afflicted, having financial troubles, matrimonial troubles, Oh, God, tonight, while I pray, set them free in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands and say, God, I take it now. And write me for this book this week. Our mailing address, the Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Write Brother Allen today and let him know that you have enjoyed this program. And remember, this is a faith telecast. When writing, always be sure to mention your prayer request and make your letter generous. His mailing address is A.A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.